Hello, my name's Sean Brown from Wizen Innovation and in this Wizen Quick Guide video series I'm going to show you how you can set up and apply a vibrating wire crack meter formula within the Wizen web portal. So first of all, just to give you a bit of background I suppose in terms of um, a vibrating wire crack meter so if we go around the, the images, um, initially we can see here in the top left, uh, this is a interface node, a vibrating wire interface node, and this image is of a one channel. This also comes in a four channel and an H channel version. In terms of actually within the node itself, then you can see here that there are connection ports associated to the wiring from the actual crack meter. And if we kind of review the, the color coding um, aspect then red is VW plus black is VW minus green is T plus white is T minus and the silver strand here at the bottom is a ground cable now normally these might be wired up and delivered to you direct from Wizen as as you uh, as you can attain them or you might look to uh, wire these yourselves and attain the sensors yourself as well the middle image well this is um, a vibrating wire crack meter now these come in different ranges and I'll touch on this later on but this kind of gives you the concept of what the uh, the item actually looks like and the descriptions of the items the bottom left is the associated cable now that can come in various different lengths and there's essentially almost an unlimited cable length so it's important to kind of plan ahead and itemize that length of cable required so normally that might be 10 meters of cable and you would wire that obviously to that interface node. Um, if your crack meters were, were more spread around the site, then obviously you'd need different lengths of cable to reach those crack meters, or perhaps you'd like to just basically have additional vibrating wire interface nodes. And finally, the fixing. So you've got the two little eye sockets on the left and the right of the actual crack meter. In terms of how you fix that to the object, where well, there's various different methods between rebar, which is the one where my mouse is at the moment, you have wall anchors, which is probably the most common version. And finally, the last one here is a bondable version. So well, maybe you're bonding this to steel and you'd use something like chemical metal, uh, which is a, a resin with non-creep characteristics. OK, so you can attain the, um, the manual from Geosense for how to install a vibrating wire crack meter. And in there will show you how you go about fitting the crack meter on site using those various different wall anchors and rebar. But in terms of just understanding the key aspects, well, this page here is showing you the range. So column A, where my mouse is, you have different range versions from five millimeter down to half a meter. Now, if you're expecting expansion or contraction, then obviously what this box is informing you, which is column uh, B is the length in millimeters to set that such that you're at the midpoint. So in other words, if you were to take the top row, you're expecting two and a half millimeters expansion or two and a half millimeters contraction. And then obviously then if you're expecting more of a compression or expansion or contraction, then obviously you tailor that to suit. Also within that manual, then you have information on the formulas so I won't go into do these two into too much detail you can read these in your own time but the formulas are embedded within the Wizen web platform so just to make it easier for the end user the most common formula is the linear calculation that's the, to utilize but perhaps as you can see here where my mouse is you might want to use a polynormal calculation and the reasons for using these two is explained as you see and finally Every crack meter has a calibration sheet, as you can see here, in terms of it has the critical information. So it's important to note that when you install your crack meters, you know which channel they are attached to. So if you have an eight channel, you'd have to obviously have eight crack meters and you'd need to know the serial numbers of each. Um, this linear factor K, where my mouse is at the moment, is then a constant value which is entered into the formula within Wizen so you can attain the values 
or usable values in millimeters. Okay, switching to a Wizen project, you can see here, if we go into the project itself, and we look at the node tab. So individually, this project has a gateway and two one channel interface nodes. You can see this by the one times BW. They've been potentially installed on site with the crack meter already attached and followed the documentation I previously went over. And you can see here that the, uh, the raw units, the, or the output units are in kilohomes and hertz. So you'll have that obviously for the, the amount of sensors that you've got attached to your interface nodes. The important thing here is obviously part of the formula is an initial value that's utilized. So, and that's the hertz. So if we take the, uh, the 54F one, for instance, and review this graphically, obviously nothing's on display, so I'm not within that potentially that date range. So we can see here the time and the date that this was installed. And initially you would have that initial value. And it's important that you're selecting this, this value based upon say an average or a median, or you're confident that this is the, uh, an initial value, not potentially, um, for instance, installed in, in a site office or something before you had your final installation. So make a note of the actual Hertz value itself. And then obviously repeat that for the amount of sensors that you've installed. So just to give an example of a, another crack meter here, we could see this, this would potentially be a value where it was first connected. So not actually installed on site. And then obviously we're looking here to, uh, to make a note or a record of when that was installed on site. And then obviously making a note of that Hertz value that you're going to utilize. Okay, the next stage is to set up the conversion formula. And to do that, we go to setup, virtual type and virtual node. And you can see here, I currently have no conversion formula set up. We would add one. We would give this a virtual type name, a logical name. And I'm gonna call that crack conversion. Now, if for instance, this was a, a new formula, that perhaps it's not embedded within the Wizen platform, then the user has a choice here to click in the formula and to enter this manually. You can also copy and paste this, paste this from Excel, if you know the Excel formula is also working correct. We'll do the option, and this is what is uh, to use the library. So we import the template from the library we have a drop down list. We go down that list and we make sure we pick the relevant formula. Obviously, cross reference any manuals or data sheets that have been supplied. But the aim is that this will contain a library of all those common ones. And we can see here that we have one previously set up. Select the formula, make a note of the text. So, as I mentioned earlier, the K value comes from the calibration sheet. You then have a Hertz that's been utilized. And the important thing here, just to know, we've got an O at the end. Perhaps you'd like to offset and change that value that's, that's utilized. Um, perhaps you're looking to start that at 10 millimeters or 15 um, because you've got some historic movement that you'd like to, uh, to carry forward. So we click confirm. And then obviously we make sure the units are what we require. So here I know this is actually uh, millimeters. The display, the rounding, obviously it's a bit too large. So we change that. And 
press save to accept that formula. So now you've got the formula, you need to individually associate those sensors on site. And to do that, we've got to initially expand and you're adding in those sensors as individual sensors. Um, so this is not per interface now, this is obviously for every single crap meter you'd have on site connected to all your interface nodes. And this is now a workflow. So you, we could have selected into the, the boxes themselves, but I've just clicked add. Now you may have a specific name that you've got to abide to. So I'm just going to call mine crack01. Now, I know what the K, the C, and the Z, and the O relate to. Now, we saw that earlier on the notes. So K is the constant that's attained from the calibration sheets. We open this tab up. Click the constant, and obviously I make a note of that constant to be added. Like so. The next is the current reading. So we've used the letter alias C for current. We go in, we make sure we select the right type. We know this is a one channel interface node. And we know that we're looking at the Hertz value. So the current Hertz value. And then obviously here, we need to make sure we select the right serial number. So I know that's 54F for the first one. Click confirm. Z is the initial value. So that's a constant again. So we click in, we click constant, and we enter in that initial value. We click confirm. And O being the offset, well, I'm not going to be using an offset here. So I could have edited that out of the formula, or obviously if I put a constant in of zero, and that will have no effect on the output. And click confirm. So that's crap meter or sensor number one. Now, obviously, if I've got more or less the same parameters in the following sensor, I can click add new copy and just edit the things that are, in, that are important. So here I'd say, obviously, this would be crack number two. The K value will differ. So I'd refer to my calibration sheet. The node, the serial number would differ. So we'd have to go into here and select the, the serial number. Make sure we select the Hertz because that will, that will default back. Confirm. And finally, the constant initial value, that will be different. Like so, press confirm. So that's the, uh, the two individual ones initially set up. It's important to press save. And remember here, we can modify this at any time if there's any mistakes made. Nothing has been applied to the future yet. Um, if I have got the units wrong, which I think I have here, by the way, is obviously it's, it's meters, but we just remove the, uh, the thousand, for instance, then obviously you can edit that at any stage um, by just by clicking Modify and that brings the formula out, and then you can edit the formula as you see fit. Just to give you an example, 
what you've got a little bit of flashing text here now so essentially this is a kind of a summary page so you've you've created the formula you've associated the uh, the sensors and now it's asking you to do the virtual node recalculation so obviously you might have done this a week after the event uh, after installation now you're basically recalculating that historical data and then applying that formula going forward so we click this button so the flashing button sorry i was correct the first time it's a uniform calculation so if you wanted to know a bit more about that this would be more about if you've got different nodes that have changed over time i won't go into that but there's a bit of information here to cover that um, the most common variant will be the uniform calculation it's a bit of a summary page about for what you're about to undertake click confirm final confirmation about what you're about to undertake and you'll see here a little status bar a percentage status bar for the progress so this shouldn't take too long obviously that that length of time depends on how much data and what sampling interval you've defined you see there it's it's done if you wanted to know that that's taking place you can obviously review that in a in a log page and you can see here that these are the two I've just done historically and then obviously going forward if I was an end client or a user and I was to log in then I would probably set my landing page to be the virtual node page so this is the individual nodes themselves but then we've obviously got a calculation associated to this and we look here that this would be the value for the uh, for the two crack meters so obviously at the moment this is not a live job but just to give an example of how to set these up so this concludes how to set up the wise and web portal for vibrating wire crack meters